Podcast. My name is Dr. J, and I want to welcome those of you who are tuned in and encourage those of you who have not yet subscribed or liked our channel to make sure that you do so, that we can continue to stay connected with you. And again, we appreciate those that are supportive of this ministry. I'm going to continue the series that I've been doing, Life Lessons on uh, Moses for 2021. So far, I've covered anger management. I've covered asking for what we need. And then today, I'm going to be talking about how to escape enslavement. Now, I know that that sounds funny. A lot of people would say, well, I'm not enslaved. But you know what? Many times we find ourselves being dependent on things that we don't even recognize that we are dependent on. That's the concept that we're going to be talking about today. You see, Moses was sent to deliver God's people from their enslavement. Their enslavement was not just a physical enslavement to cruel taskmasters as we read about in the Word of God. But once they got out into the wilderness, we began to recognize that it was much deeper than that. We recognized that they were enslaved in their minds. That's right. It was a bondage of the mind that became visible as soon as they got out into uncharted territory. As soon as they got into a location where they had never been before, then you began to see the attributes that began to manifest themselves to help us to see that they were really enslaved. They weren't free at all. So even after we see them delivered from the power of Egypt, we learn that Egypt still had power over them. I mean, we can relate to this. What do we do when we find ourselves in uncharted territory? A lot of times we rely on what we know. That's right. We have our own fallback our fallback behavior. Well, their fallback behavior was Egypt, functioning as those who were in bondage in Egypt. Some people would say they had a slave mentality. They were still locked down. Even though they had a guide, they had a sponsor, and they had a big book, <laughs> they had a manual, they still were lost. They still were in bondage, they still were enslaved. Yeah, the guy, they had Moses. They had God who would manifest himself in a pillar of fire. He would manifest himself in a cloud. And every time he would move, they would move. They had a manual. They were given the law and the commandments. But yet, with a manual, with a sponsor, and with a guide, their problem is, is they define themselves incorrectly. And I think that they define themselves incorrectly because of fear and also lack of faith. The lack of faith that their forefather Abraham had. See, Abraham had an awesome relationship with God. But I believe that the fact of their own inadequacies created fear that hindered their follow through. And so therefore, they functioned in a way that was substandard to what they should have functioned. And so therefore, they failed to define themselves as God's covenant people. You see, freedom can only come, and here's the first point I want to make with you guys, is be sure to define yourself as the redeemed of God, God's special people. You need to define yourself that way. You see, it's important how you define yourself. You can never get out of a box by defining yourself within the box. It just won't happen. You have to see yourself outside of that box in order to get out of the box. And it's the same way when it comes to your past. If you define yourself by the past that you've been enslaved by, you will always display the attributes of that enslavement. And that's exactly what we see as we look at Israel. Instead of them displaying the attributes of Abraham and having faith, we begin to see them having the attributes of unbelief. In fact, if you ever read the Hebrew letter in the New Testament, 
it constantly talks about the unbelief that they had. And that was the reason why they were condemned to wander in the wilderness. They did not have the same faith that Abraham, their father, had. And that had to do with 430 years of conditioning. That's right. They were in a culture that, con that, that enslaved them. And they became conformed to that world. You know, we need to be careful that we don't become conformed to the world in which we live. That we don't allow our minds to be changed, to embrace the way that this world thinks. Because this world begins to make us and enslave us. You see, Moses was actually sent to transform a nation. But the problem is, is that nation had conformed to an inferior pattern of behavior that had been handed down to them through 430 years of conditioning by the Egyptians. That's right. So in many ways, they had lost their identity and had become what Egypt had created. You be careful about becoming what other people create. A lot of times our peers and our interactions with other people can cause us to begin to embrace behavior that is really inconsistent with what we should be. So therefore we need to identify ourselves as who we are. We must identify ourselves as having a covenant relationship with our God. Number two, you need to destroy your alliance with the past. Now, first of all, the way that you destroy your alliance with the past is you have to deny yourself because a lot of what you are and were was conditioned by that past. But the thing is, in order to be renewed, renewed, made new again, then that means that we have to deny ourselves. And Jesus said that. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. In fact, when he was in a discussion with Nicodemus, he told Nicodemus that you must be born again. That's right. Now, what that means is that we have to be careful not to succumb to the pressures of adopting the system that we are in and defining ourselves by it or allowing the things that we have done in the past to continually be considered as part of who we are at this present moment. Yes, it brought us thus far, but the thing is, in order to escape our addiction and enslavement to the past, then we must destroy our alliance with it. What I'm saying is, whatever this world has dictated as your attributes, you should allow them to be redefined. And I know that goes counterculture to a lot of, especially organizations that exist today to help people. Some organizations tell the people that once an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. Once an addict, you're always an addict. But you know what? I don't buy into that philosophy. I really don't. In fact, in my past, I had to deal with addiction issues when I was a younger person in my early 20s. But I don't define myself in that way now. I have to define myself the way that the scripture defines me. There's a scripture in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. And in that scripture, Paul said, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate or homosexual, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor, co nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. But then he writes, such were some of you. Did you hear that? He said, such were some of you. That's a past tense. And based off of that past tense, he says, and he gives a new statement. He says, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were 
justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God. In other words, what Paul is saying is that you don't have to be that same person you were in the past. You don't have to continue to hold the identity. My name is so-and-so and I am a. No, you are a child of God. And that's how Israel needed to see themselves. Israel needed to understand themselves as the children of God. And I don't care how inadequate you see yourself. I don't care how many flaws you see in yourself. You need to define yourself as God's children because the only way that your attributes will change is when you embrace the change that he wants to bring about in you. Your very person can change. Once a chemical abuser, not always a chemical abuser. Once an alcoholic, not always an alcoholic. Once an addict, not always an addict. There is always the hope of liberation, for liberation can only truly come with redefinition. You need to redefine yourself and begin to see yourself not as in the box of enslavement, but outside the box of enslavement. You have to see yourself not bound, but free. You see, you can't escape the past by continually defining yourself by that past. It doesn't work. You have to acknowledge your identity with God. Israel needed to identify themselves with God, but instead they were afraid. Instead, they began to think about their connection more with unhealthy alliances. But you have to destroy those unhealthy alliances with the past. Because when you destroy them, you can't go back to them. In fact, the Bible says that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. In fact, the word says that your old man has passed away. The scripture says, behold, all things have become new. So therefore, we are a new creature. In fact, Romans the 12th chapter, where we talked about not being conformed to the world, it begins by telling us that we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. That means that the body is slain. That's right. The body is slain so that the spirit can be renewed. Now, the third thing that I want to share with you. We need to depend fully on the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In other words, when we depend on the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, instead of living in the past, we live in the now. You see, it's about what God is doing with me now. It's not so much about what happened in the 1970s or the 1980s or the 1990s, but it's about what the Spirit is doing with me right now. What the Spirit is doing with you right now. You see, Israel, even though they had 430 years of history, if they had defined themselves as the covenant people of God, and began to walk consistently with how they defined themselves and those attributes, I believe that they would have been more successful because we have a God who continually sanctifies us. In fact, even as children of God, the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us from all sin. That's right so that we may have fellowship with him. He says that we walk in the light as he is in the light. And that's where our fellowship is. We have to define ourselves as his children and depend fully on his Holy Spirit, which works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. That's right. 
So establish your identity based on your present and not based on your past. We have to acknowledge our dependency on God and then the Holy Spirit is able to change your attributes. You know what? You're going to depend on something whether you want to or not because that's how we've been created. We are beings who are dependent, believe it or not. In fact, when God made us, he made the whole system of things to exist within him and to be upheld and sustained by him and his power. And in order for us to continue to live and continue to thrive, we are dependent upon the resources that God made in this world. Now, our problem is that we unrealistically and unproductively seek autonomy, self-autonomy, self-sufficiency. And in doing that, what happens is our search for these things lead us away from God. It, it leads us to display attributes of rebellion and moves us toward dependency on impotent things that have no power to liberate and has a whole lot of power to enslave. You see, we're dependent and that dependency that we were created to be dependent upon is God. That's right. We have an insatiable thirst for God. Like a deer panteth for water, my soul thirsts for thee. <laughs> but you know what? When we don't satisfy that thirst with God, then what happens is we find ourselves dependent on other things that's less than God. Some people have a thirst for money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people have a thirst for drugs and they begin to acknowledge and exalt drugs in their life. Some people have a thirst for relationships. Israel's thirst led to idolatry. It really did. They began to create their own God. They began to go back to their slave mentality. They came from a place that was riddled with a pantheon of false gods. They grew up knowing about Apis, knowing about Isis, knowing about Ptah, knowing about Osiris, and all of those gods of ancient Egypt that had been overcome by the one true God. Now here they are, leaving Egypt in the wilderness, going to worship this one true God. Moses goes up into the mountain, they're afraid. In fact, they say, Moses, you speak to him, let us speak to you. And there, when Moses is up, for as long as he is in the mountain, they talk to Aaron and say, let us make the God that brought us out of Egypt. You see, we need something to depend on. And if we don't find God to depend on, we'll create something else. And that's exactly what they did. They created an inferior God. They functioned and they went right back to their comfort zone. They went back, right back to the way and the attributes of their enslavement. I'm sure the Egyptians would have been very happy to see them build that calf, that golden calf, because the Egyptians would have recognized that they're only functioning according to their past, to their enslavement. You know what? We also see that they were enslaved because they still had a taste on the mouth. 
to that which they indulged in in the past. You know, some people need to get rid of that taste. Theirs, they constantly talked about the leeks and the melons of Egypt and all the things that they used to experience there. And sometimes when you don't divorce yourself from your past and you're always talking about your past, then what happens is you continue to desire and have a taste for your past. And you have to be careful about that. But you know what? God is able to satisfy your true taste. God is able to give you what you really need. You see, it was God that supplied them with manna from heaven. It was God that sent them quails to be able to eat. You see, when we trust God, God is able to satisfy our taste. He's able to give us a taste for something that's far better. That's what he's able to do. And so therefore, we must be dependent on God to take care of our needs. Do you know that the temptation scenario that we read in the New Testament where Jesus goes into the wilderness to be tempted 40 days by Satan? And Satan comes to him and says, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus says, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what Jesus says. In other words, he says, we must be fully dependent on him. Because if we're not dependent on God, then we have no anchor to hold us steadfast. You see, the Israelites, because of their lack of dependence and lack of fidelity, they were willing to give up their freedom and go back to that bondage so that they could just have that temporary satisfaction. You know, without a dependency on God, individuals will regress back into the enslavement that they once found themselves in. They'll return like a dog returns to his vomit, like a pig returns to wallow in the mire. We have to depend on God. And let me tell you about the past. The past doesn't have an ability to call you. It really doesn't. You see, our problem is that we tend not to break our connections with the past. That's where the real issue is. We have to break the connections and allow the spirit to connect us with God. And the Spirit begins to pray for our weaknesses. Pray for things that we don't even know we need. But because they hadn't broken that bond with the past, they were still enslaved. Anyone can become an addict. And anything can be addictive. That's right. The substance that causes desirable brain endorphins has the potential to become enslaving. It doesn't have to be a chemical. It can even be an experience. John Calvin once wrote this. He said, the heart, the human heart, is a constant idol factory. So we constantly make idols that tend to enslave us. So the ultimate source of bondage is not the substance. It's not the crack, it's not the marijuana, it's not the cocaine, it's not the heroin, it's not the pills, it's not the alcohol. That's not what actually is enslaving you. It's the person. It comes from the inner man. And that's why the scripture tells us to strengthen the inner man. We must allow our inner man to become strong. You see, it comes from what we trust in. It comes from what we believe. 
It comes from what motivates us, the very motivations of our heart, the seed of our intention. That's where enslavement is born. That's where bondage comes from. So therefore, to escape bondage, this is what we learn. We learn that we shouldn't allow negative experiences of our past to grip us. Secondly, we don't allow our feelings of inadequacy about how imperfect we know we are to have a foothold where it hinders our relationship with our God. The Bible says that we can go into his presence with boldness. You see, he has covered us with his garment of perfection. That's what he's done. And so therefore, we can have freedom. Our freedom comes when one we define ourselves as redeemed by God. When we destroy our alliances with our past, denying even ourselves, and when we depend fully on the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, that's the truth you need to know, and that's the truth that will set you free. And after night is on your mind You jump into your right Headed to the west side You're on the wrong too far from home See I know you want another hit You just can't get no peace of mind You take a hit and your mind is lit Now you think and get it together Get right Yeah I hope you can see you've been fiending But on Jesus Christ you need to be leaning You've been looking for eyes and all wrong places been around seen a lot of tragic cases but i know the lord's the one for you by his dying on the cross he gave a chance to you yeah and when a brother's fiending i'm sure that you know what i'm meaning hey i know the lord is there for you to see and he can help you win the victory yeah at times when you are hanging on a trip Things are getting heated, can't get a grip Hey, don't play yourself, don't be a fool He'll never lay you down like the drugs you use He only wants to give you what you need And it's not the dope that you want, it's hope he's giving Now if it's cool with you and right now you see Let's take it back to the way your life's supposed to be Cause you've been looking for highs and all the wrong places been around seen a lot of tragic cases but i know the lord's the one for you by his dying on the cross he gave a chance to you yeah and when a brother's fiending i'm sure that you know what i'm meaning hey i know the lord is there for you to see and he can help you win the victory because what you want he got what you need you're the one he's been looking to lead You know that you've been flipping out Your life is full of drama Let him teach you what it's all about Don't take your time to make up your mind Like a gem or a pearl He's one of a kind, yeah He's the one who will be loyal and true He's the ultimate high So let the Lord help you You, 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 you. Places. Been around, seen a lot of tragic cases But I know the Lord's the one for you By his dying on the cross, he gave a chance to you, yeah And when a brother's fiending I'm sure that you know what I'm meaning I know the Lord is there for you to see And he can help you win the victory, yeah Looking for highs in all the wrong places Been around, seen a lot of tragic cases But I know the Lord's the one for you By his dying on the cross, he gave a chance to you, yeah And when a brother's feeding I'm sure that you know what I'm meaning I know the Lord is there for you to see And he can help you win the victory, yeah Looking for highs in all the wrong places Be
been around, seen a lot of tragic cases But I know the Lord's the one for you By his dying on the cross, he gave a chance to you, yeah